we are live yeah yeah so good evening everyone today is our uh, third session on uh, reproductive immunology so many many people had uh, requested for uh, continuing the reproductive immunology classes and uh, today's session is one such important topic where we are talking about intralipids so uh, this is uh, important because uh, many a times when we see the prescription of patients with uh, recurrent implantation failures or uh, patients uh, who have uh, uh, gone through like multiple IVFs, they have taken many medications, which we don't know whether it is really worth or uh, whether it is uh, something like an empirical treatment and whether this is one of those tracks which really needs to be uh, given or whether it is a fluke or uh, what is the present uh, scenario practically, I think today we will have a short discussion on that. Uh, so over to you. Yeah, so actually this is going to be a very short discussion. And uh, one of the things which is, which is sort of not a great thing about all these therapies is that these therapies get extremely hyped in our country. Right, probably because of the excessive commercialization of IVF in our country, it is very easy to hype these therapies. Okay, but as practicing uh, gynecologist, there are just certain things which we need to know. So I will just share my screen on this. Okay, so basically, see, intralipid infusion, when we try to talk about intralipid infusion and all, what is it that we need to actually understand? What does it do? Okay, basically, your intralipid infusion is going to go and act on this thing. PPAR, that is peroxisome activated protein receptors, which are present on the NK cells, and it is going to sensitize the NK cells. All right, apart from sensitization of NK cells, we don't really know much about the intralipid infusion. All right. We really don't know much about this. All we know is that when the uterus is going to accept the embryo inside it, all right, this embryo is going to present something called as HLA G cells to the NK cells. And if these two guys don't match with each other, then there is going to be very reduced or we can say defective implantation and this defective implantation is going rise to give rise to abortions. Understanding? So how this intralipid actually works in sensitizing the NK cells, we don't know, but we all know that it is going to act on this. Right? So now what is the hype that we have created? We have created a hype that if in case you have failed IVF cycle, if in case you have taken LIT therapy, which is again unindicated, but still, if in case you have taken LIT therapy, if in case you have had more than two abortions, and if in case your age is more than 38, then we will prefer to give you intralipid therapy. Intralipid therapy, not very expensive. It is going to cost around 5,000 rupees, actual price. But uh, people give special intralipids to people. And we have seen prices for intralipids going right up to 25,000, 30,000. Maybe they are adding some gold inside it, silver inside it. We don't know, right? But then this is what it is. How to give the intralipids? Intralipids are ideally to be given from day two, day three. When you are starting the preparation for HRT, that is going to be your first dose. Then you can give it probably again on day seven and day eight as your second dose. And then you can give it just prior to embryo transfer day 13, day 14. Is this the most ideal dose? The answer is I don't know. Okay, but people can experiment with these dosages because you do not know the exact amount of dose to be given. It is a very, very, very simple procedure. Approximately 100 ml to 200 ml of intralipid, whatever is commercially available can be dissolved in approximately 500 ml of normal saline and can be transfused over 3 to 4 hours. That's it. The patient ideally should have an admission-based procedure to do this. But will your intralipid go and act inside the uterus or not act inside the uterus is something which we don't know. It really doesn't depend on who gives the intralipid or which center gives the intralipid because almost the entire intralipid in India is manufactured and supplied only by one company. So it really does not matter. Okay. 
you can't really do much because if the, there is only one manufacturer in our country fine now after you have understood this thing much 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 more important for you to understand is this all right and i think this is your take home point so i will write it down very sharply this is only indicated if your embryo is a euploid embryo this is only indicated if your pelvis is a normal pelvis right this is only and only indicated if the patient has had more than two episodes of having recurrent implantation failure where you have preferably transferred euploid embryos which are actually day five blastocyst embryos and it is only and only indicated if all other causes are ruled out now this is so important what we commonly see in practice and i'm sure people who are watching are going to agree that intralipids are given to people after giving a lupride depo in a patient who is having grade 4 endometriosis correct and then you are expecting the intralipid to go and work are that nodule will not even let that intralipid pass through anything how will that intralipid go and act we have a 7.5 cm fibroid another 4 cm fibroid another 3 cm fibroid another 2 cm fibroid and another fibroid touching the endometrium but not distorting it and we are giving intralipids how is it going to work it is not a normal pelvis correct we have not done nics or we have not done pgta for the patient we don't have the embryo status and if you give intralipids to an aneuploid embryo how on earth will god go and prevent and i mean you know how on earth is implantation going to happen in an aneuploid embryo after giving intralipids okay we must as as colleagues remember one very important thing about this short session that if this therapy was really so good remember one thing there are countries which do approximately 60 times more ivf cycles than what india does okay and these are our neighbors they would have used it extensively okay if it was so effective in their practice the very reason why it is not used so effectively the very reason why it is not uh, you know practiced for example in our previous class i was speaking and i have uh, you know i have a little good fortune of entertaining patients predominantly from europe and i was trying to tell somebody that in europe if you do lit you are virtually going to be your license is going to be taken off because there it is going to be done by department of transplant medicine and they are not going to allow you to do it like how you do it in india as an opd based procedure even i do it as an opd based procedure because i think it may work in some situations but in any other country you are not going to be allowed to do it understanding in the same manner i personally think i have used intralipids in less than 15 to 20 patients in a year okay every year over the last 4 to 5 years i personally think it does not give any great effects okay i personally think intralipids are great for parenteral nutrition but apart from parenteral nutrition they are not good in anything else that is my thing certain common side effects which we should observe if you give the intralipids too fast it can cause little bit of venous thrombosis it can cause damage to that veins patient can have pain in the veins understanding that is something which we should keep in mind there could be certain allergic reactions because we don't know how these emulsified lipids are going to go and react in a particular blood situation so we don't know that right so that is just something else which we should be careful about just because it is a cheap therapy i don't think we should abuse it see what we commonly see in india is that after you have one or two ivf cycles which are failed what is public going to do they will first do lit which is unindicated after doing lit patient is given hcqs prednisolone cyclosporine and intralipids how on earth is this going to work you know this is basically changing <laughs> this is basically like doing a uterine transplant you know that much amount of immunosuppression is given to the patient and i personally don't think that is required nor does the science support it i'll be happy to answer four or five questions from shilpa madam or from the audience because i think this is a very hot thing and i think this really 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 needs to be put an end to yeah so one uh, input i would like to give so they, we did the similar class uh, in our fertility master class last yes. year around the same time in february and i was doing around uh, four to five intralipids a month at that time so yeah. after you told that there is no difference and once we had this discussion and i have i am hardly using like one in three months now 
So there is absolutely no difference in the outcomes. I mean, uh, I would. Uh, I like, was telling you even before, people are looking at your face and getting pregnant. <laughs> they <laughs> did, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I think uh, it was a very valid point from your end when you spoke about like, you know, things like ruling out pelvic uh, pathologies, ruling out uh, the uh, aneuploides, which is, I think, uh, are overlooked, especially in centers where they are catering to uh, middle class population, where the costing is going to go up and up and up and they want to look for an alternative where they can at least try and do some things in a desperate situation. But uh, as you said, that these are not the measures which needs to be taken in desperate situation because any which ways it is not going to work. Correct. Uh, I think uh, using the, such uh, drugs should be done very cautiously and I think you should uh, uh, reserve it for uh, patients or a set of patients who you think really it might work. And as we all know, intralipids uh, uh, is more of a parenteral nutrition thing. And uh, this is known to like NK cell activity, but there is so much controversy going on between like, you know, the so many uh, a la carte things that we, we have now, like thymosin. Somebody asked just now, what is the role of thymosin? We will have no role. A, yeah. So we will have a class on that. So, uh, uh, so, madam is asking if patient becomes... Megashini, madam, if the patient has become pregnant and if there is cardiac activity, stop intralipids. Yeah. Because that means it is a euploid embryo most probably and then nature will take care of it. Right? Mm -hmm. We really don't need to give intralipids. I've seen people getting intralipids till 34 weeks. Okay? And every infusion is costing only 27,000 rupees. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. My God also. Mm -hmm. So... In recurrent implantation, failure of self cycles will embryo donation cycle gives good positive results. If you are doing embryo donation, why should you do immunology? Yeah. Embryo donation is any which way somebody else's embryo. It is like the mother is a surrogate mother. Mm -hmm. Just put something inside. Imagine a surrogate mother is getting pregnant with somebody else's embryo. How strong the HLA system God has designed is. That is what I was trying to talk in the first class. The polymorphism of HLA-C and HLA-G is so strong that anybody's embryo can go and get implanted in anybody's uterus. Understanding? And if you want to do embryo adoption, that means basically just giving, pre treating that mother as a surrogate and putting somebody's embryo inside that. Correct? How is a, How can you do LIT in that mother and make her pregnant? It's so cheating yaar. I mean it's not required yeah so otherwise I think uh, yeah I mean there were uh, questions that should intralipid be given in the previous cycle where the NK no. IVIG should be given in the previous cycle because IVIG time to sensitize in the body is approximately 4 to 6 days understanding so if you want to use IVIG which is an even more expensive therapy then you should give it uh, one cycle prior but intralipids you can give it in the same cycle there is no doubt in that yeah, yeah. So apart from that, I think, uh, yeah, this is good. I think we should end the class because I think you have given quite uh, good take home points. Done. So thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for joining at such a short notice. Thank you, guys.